Okay, new little project on the bench down here in the lab today. Uh, what you're looking at is a little board that uh, uh, came in from Croatia last week. And um, it allows you to power uh, your Raspberry Pi via 12 volts. But more importantly, it allows the uh, Raspberry Pi to cleanly boot and cleanly shut down through a series of user configurable timers. So in a nutshell, how this thing works is you have a little terminal block over here in the corner. If you can see, it says 12 volt ground accessory. So when you apply switched ignition over here, it starts some uh, countdown timers over here, our boot up countdown timer. When that expires, it cuts on this 12 volt to five volt power supply, thus making this USB port here hot, which you would have your Raspberry Pi plugged into. So that takes care of the booting process. Now, as far as the shutdown goes, you've got a Python script running on the Raspberry Pi that's constantly looking for a ground signal on GPIO pin 21. So this board, when you switch the ignition off, it uh, has a shutdown timer. When that expires, it sends a ground signal from this pin to the Raspberry Pi, thus initiating that Python script, shutting down this Pi, and then there's a, a timer that continues, and after that timer expires, it will shut off the power supply and shut down the whole board, thus eliminating any type of parasitic draw or anything like that. So very good device. Um, it works well. Obviously, I haven't tested, tested it for reliability. I've just tested it for a couple of days here on the bench. I've left it running, and everything seems to, to, uh, it seems to solve a lot of problems, that's for sure. But uh, let me get it hooked up. Um, We'll get the hardware part of it out of the way. We'll jump over and I'll show you how to configure the software. Super simple, one script is all it, all it, all it requires. And uh, then we'll go over where I got it and uh, you know the cost and everything. But uh, the only thing that comes in the package is the board itself. Um, obviously the Pi doesn't come with it. Um, uh, you're gonna need obviously the power to go from the Raspberry Pi to here. So you'll need a this one's gonna require a micro USB cable to USB-A. And you're also gonna need a couple of header pin jumpers because you have to connect these first two pins to the pins over here. So let me get it hooked up and uh, I'll show you how it works. Okay, here's our little uh, setup for our demonstration here. I've got a battery over here, 12 volt battery that I've connected to our header pins. You'll, the red is constant, the green is ground, and the white is hooked up to this switch to simulate our ignition. And then uh, I'll talk about uh, the GPIO pin on, on the Raspberry Pi in, in a, when we talk about the software, but the only pins I have hooked up over here is the orange wire is, is a uh, coming from pin one of the Raspberry Pi, uh, supplying this little board with 3.3 volts and the the green one is an output coming from this board going to the Raspberry Pi to GPIO pin 21. So how this works is when you flip this switch, which is uh, going to be our simulated ignition, that'll start this first timer here. And when 30 seconds expires, it will cut the power supply on, thus starting up the, power, the uh, Raspberry Pi. There's a second timer in here called boot which keeps this thing from um, cutting off potentially during the boot cycle. Let's say you turned on the ignition, it, the 30 seconds expired, and during the boots, the, the Raspberry Pi started to boot, and then during that boot time, you turn the ignition off. Well, that could potentially corrupt your SD card because it hasn't finished booting yet. But because it has this 45 seconds uh, in here, or this, this boot timer, like I said before, it's all user configurable. You can make these anything you want. But uh, because it's going through this boot timer, it uh, will make sure that this thing, it, that your Raspberry Pi fully boots in that 45 seconds. So that eliminates any corruption caused by, uh, you know, by turning off the ignition suddenly in, in the boot process, okay? Uh, these other, these last two here, it's off and shut down. The off, when you turn the ignition off, it's gonna wait 15 seconds. After that 15 seconds has expired, it's going to, this board is gonna send a uh, ground signal from 
the second pin here over to GPIO 21 on the Raspberry Pi. And I'll talk about how to find that pin in a, when we get to the software. But uh, thus shutting down the Pi so that it shuts it down pretty quickly. But there's also a timer in here that, uh, that uh, you know, will keep the power on for 60 seconds afterwards, thus ensuring that your Raspberry Pi has uh, shut down cleanly. And then, and then after this 60 seconds has expired, the whole thing will shut down and, uh, you know, ready for the next cycle, so to speak. But uh, all these timers are, are, are necessary, so, um, you know, to keep it from uh, potentially causing a problem. So let's fire it up here and I will show you. So let's pretend like we're turning on our ignition here. And when this happens, you'll see there's a little light over here that says accessory. And that's the one that'll light up. I didn't mention before, but I've got this USB sound card in here only for demonstration purposes and only because it has a LED on it. And you can kind of tell, you know, the status of the Pi, whether it's on or off. So let me turn off this light and I can make it a little easier to see. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn the, turn the ignition on. All right. We've got our accessory light on. That means ignition's on. Now the next, next timer, the timer that's going on is this first one. So 30 seconds after I flip that switch, you should start to see activity over here. So we'll give it a few seconds. There it goes. And you should see the light up when it gets when it gets booted, it's, it should light up. There it is. So now now the Pi is, is booting up. And like I said before, if I was to come over here and turn the ignition off, it's still gonna continue to boot and it's still gonna continue to be powered. And that's to keep you, like I said, from from any type of corruption. If I turn the ignition back on, the timer start over. Okay, now we're fully booted. But we have to wait, you know, 45 seconds because um, it won't shut down anytime before that. I don't know if that's uh, 15 seconds after, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's 30 seconds and these timers maybe start at the same time. And it's really just 15 seconds after it's uh, turned on. It's possible. All right, let's go ahead and turn it off. Turn the ignition off over here. So what should happen is when I turn the ignition off, 15 seconds after I turn this off, this is gonna start a uh, shutdown sequence. Notice the light went out over here. And the power supply is still on. And we should see some activity over here very quickly. And there it goes. And now it's turned off. And you'll notice that the power supply is still on over here, thus ensuring a safe shutdown over here. And that's how it works. We won't wait around for 60 seconds. This, When this expires, the whole thing will shut down. This light will obviously go out. But that's how it works. And uh, let me jump over and show you how to put the, uh, the Python script on the SD card. Okay, let's install the software here for this little device. First thing you're going to need to do is obviously log into the Pi. And this is a fresh install. I um, haven't done anything to it, just did an uh, update and an upgrade. The first thing you need to do is make sure you've got uh, the uh, program in that controls the device. And you do that just by simply typing pin out. I think it's installed on all the uh, Raspberry Pi software, but I'm not sure. If you get any type of return like this, it's installed. If not, and you, nothing returns, you're going to have to do a um, an install of the application. That's sudo apt install python 3-gpio0. When you install that, um, when you type pin out, you should get some type of return. So let's have a look at this pin out here. 
when you type pin out, first thing you're going to see is basically a, a layout of your Raspberry Pi. Uh, this up here is, is, is basically depicting a, uh, a layout of the header pins. The one is pin number one, so you got 20 pins here and then for this particular Pi and then 20 on the top, with pin 40 being uh, the complete opposite of pin one. Those are the two we're concerned about. So you remember I talked about where that the header jumper needs to connect. Well, you were concerned about the 3.3 volt out on the Raspberry Pi and uh, GPIO 21, which is pin 40 on this particular board. I think they changed between uh, Raspberry Pi models. You really need to make sure that you've got the right pin by typing this pin out here. So we're going to connect uh, pin 1 from the Raspberry Pi to pin 1 on that uh, on-off board and then pin 40 on this Raspberry Pi to pin 2 on the on-off board. And they're labeled on the on-off on the on board, so um, it's the first two pins. So that's it. That's what that's done. you're done with the, all the uh, you know the connections to the hardware. So let's move on to installing the little Python script. So they want you to make a directory called scripts. Now we're going to cd into scripts. We're in the directory. It's empty, obviously, and we're going to do a nano. It's called uh, nano. what it's called shutdown withhold.py so shutdown with hold.py all right now we got a blank file this is all in their documentation it's available on the uh, place where you purchase it so you can download this there I'm just showing you you can either do a wget and pull it over they give you the link i'm just going to copy the the contents out of that file so here's a little script here i'm going to copy it to here one thing i did want to point out you know we're dealing with the gpio 21 you can change this. I've already, I've already tried it. So they, it defaults to 21. 21 is printed on that board. But if you want to make it, uh, you know, 0 or 20, you can or probably any of the other ones. And that's good in case you have conflicts or something with, uh, you know, a particular piece of software you're trying to, to run along with this. So we're going to keep it 21, Control X. All right, that takes care of that. We need to change the permissions on this by doing a chmod. A plus X and then shut down. And there it is. You can test to see if there's any errors, I guess. So it appears to be running fine. Control C to get out of it. Now, to make this thing automatically start on boot, you've got to do a sudo nano slash etc rc dot local. They want you to scroll down to the first line before exit. And you're going to want to add this line here. Python slash home pi scripts. home slash pi slash scripts. I think that's right. Yeah, and then shut down withhold. And then space the and sign. So that should take care of and then control X, get out of it. So that should start it up with boot and that's it. That's all you really need to do. It should now be working. Very, very simple. Um, okay, I did want to show one other thing. If you're doing this with Pystar, there's a couple of other steps. Maybe you want to do a uh, Pystar hotspot in the car. So let's, uh, I'll show you how to install because that, that GPIO zero does not come on, 
the distribution of pi star. So I happen to have pi star here. So we're going to log into that. Because this would be a really good device for a mobile hotspot. First thing you got to do is we're in, a, you can see we're in read only. So we got to do RPI dash RW. And then we're going to do the same thing. You're going to do a make dir uh, scripts. So you're going to make the directory. Get in there. You'll see I've got this in here. There's a, there's a difference though because this script is in a different location than the other one. It's not slash home pi slash scripts. It's slash home pi star dash scripts. So when you're doing your um, rc.local, trying to skip down quickly. I don't remember what it was called. Anyway, there it is. Down here at the bottom, you're going to have to add um, python uh, slash home slash pi star slash scripts slash um, shut down withhold. So it would be like that. Okay, so it's a different directory basically. I'm not going to do it on here. I'm not using it on here. So it's just my home home setup. So that's if you're doing it on Pi Star. Oh, and you all have you also have to enter. I'm sorry. You have to uh, install it on here. That what I told you before. It's a uh, sudo apt install. So that's the uh, command, which we went over earlier. Just want to make sure because it might be confusing or it simply won't work because the directory would be wrong. So those are the changes you have to make for PyStar. That's it. Everything else you should, people should be able to figure out, I think. It's a good, good, little, good little project or good little board for sure. Now, where do you get it? You get it from a place called Tindy. And on this SIP website, there's a store called Pico Touch Store. And they are out of Croatia, Nine Alpha Land. And here it is right here. It's called the Raspberry Pi Automatic On slash Off. And it has great reviews. You can read all the reviews. People are really happy with it. And uh, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Anyway, that's it. Looks like uh, at the time of this video, they only have three left in stock. So get them while you can. They're about $37 plus shipping. Again, it's called Pico Touch Store. And uh, it'll be coming from Croatia. That's it. Good luck.